Silver Hoy! A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hio Silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, when gun law ruled the range country, many towns were under the domination of a local boss. Even the sheriff took orders from him, and the true principles of democracy might have been destroyed on the frontier if the masked rider of the plains had not taken a hand. It was he, more than any other man, who brought justice to everyone, who put an end to the law of force and made the winning of the West possible. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Sumner. There's going to be trouble. Oh, Silver, away! The traveling troupe of players calling themselves the Great Winston Repertoire Company, purveyors of polite entertainment and cultured drama, was in reality a seedy group of third-rate old-time actors and amateurish youngsters. Nevertheless, as it made its way through the rich western mining towns on its journey to San Francisco, it met with great success. The miners, starved for amusement, paid well to enjoy its mildewed plays. In Sumner, the troupe was beginning the second week of an indefinite engagement. And when, on the night our story opens, the curtain was lowered on the final act, the delighted audience howled and stamped its approval. You fellow, Mr. Reed. Yeah? I, I mean, being friends like that, they're play acting girl. Gosh, I never knew a female could be as pretty as that uh, outside of pictures. She's pretty all right. <laughs> Not to mention, she's got a rich brother she don't know nothing about. You ought to... Shut up about her, brother. Well, you, you ought to savvy my orders by this time. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Reed. Honest, I am. I forgot was all. That's enough. Yeah. Uh, ain't that there your buggy? It is. <laughs> Going riding with that play acting girl again? Making it your business? Shucks, no, I. But every evening you. One of these to... days, Ruth, that blabbing mouth of yours will be shut for good. Oh, I ain't saying nothing. You're like all the other fools in this town. You talk your head off, I'd let you. Gosh, Mr. O'Meara, I, I guess there ain't nobody in summer that'd have the nerve to go again, you. They'd better not. Blast it. Here comes everybody out. I'd hope she'd get here before they could see her. Oh, here she comes. Clear out. Yeah. I'll... Did I keep you waiting? Am I late? I hurried as fast as I could. You are. Quick, into the buggy. Stand clear. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up there. Get up there. Get up. 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 They would have mobbed you. They're just being friendly, that's all. It shouldn't matter to you. Well, it does. Get up there. Get up. Where are we going? Out the mountain road. Fine. Oh, no, I love it. 
Like this country? You know I do. I've never seen anything half so beautiful or wild back east. Then why don't you stay in Sumner? Please. Hmm. Still hoping to find that runaway brother of yours, eh? I told you that's the only reason I came west. And I will find Bob someday. Oh, by play acting on a stage? I have my living to earn. No, you haven't. Oh, but I have. You don't understand. I haven't a penny except what Mr. Winston pays me. That ain't what I meant. No. Nora, you and me are going to have a talk. Well, what about Mr. Mead? And don't call me Mr. Mead. Can't you say Carl? I'd rather not. You'd get used to it. Wouldn't be near so hard to say later on if you'd just get started now. Whoa there, whoa boy, whoa, whoa. Oh, my favorite view. You remember, didn't you? Uh-huh. That's why I stopped here. The valley, thousands of feet below. The moon shining on... Now, wait. I said we was going to have a talk. A talk? About us and your brother. I... Look here, Nora. You hanker to find Bob pretty bad, don't you? Of course I do. Our folks are dead. He's the only family I have. We haven't seen each other for five years, but we were such awfully good friends. Just picked up and hightailed, eh? There was nothing for him in the East. He'd heard of the gold, the silver to be found out here. Ever hear from him? Just the first year, twice. Nothing after that. No idea at all where he located. Well, both times he wrote, it was from a different place. Uh-huh. There's lots of drifters come out here. Most of them come to a bad end. Oh, no, not Bob. Well, that wasn't what I was getting at. Nora, I reckon you've been in town long enough by now to have some notion how I rate in Sumner. Everyone says you're awfully important. Just about run things, I guess. Got twice the cash anybody else has, too. Got plenty. Got plenty for two people. Two people? Sure, why not? You and me. You... You don't waste much time, do you? Never have, never will. Now, how's the strike you? Wouldn't be so bad for a penniless girl getting hitched to me, would it? Not so bad, eh? Really, I, I don't know what to say. Don't see the difficulty. We scarcely know each other. That can be changed. But I, I never thought of it before. What do you suppose I was taking your buggy riding for? Didn't I give you no hint? I'd rather not talk about it now. Some other evening. Never know better time than the present. You heard me say I had plenty of cash, didn't you? Money doesn't matter. <laughs> Cash always matters. Ain't nothing matters more than cash. Ain't nothing nicer to have. You ain't got the right feelings toward cash. That's one of the things you'll have to learn different after we get hitched. Oh, but I haven't said we would. In, in fact, I'm almost certain we won't. Just said you'd give a heap to find your worthless brother. I would, but, but he isn't worthless, he is. Ever think how much better the wife of a rich fellow like me could do some hunting around than a play-acting girl that ain't got no choice where she goes? Yes. If you haven't, you'd better. Mr. Mead... Would you answer a question? Sure. The people in town, when I've inquired about Bob, they always say they've never heard of him. And, and yet, and yet all the time I have the strangest feeling they're hiding something from me. Are they, Mr. Mead? Are they? Of course not. Just your notion. Still not saying yes? I'll have to have more time. Back up there, fellow. Back up. Where are we going? Back to town. We've said no for the night. Well, there ain't nothing to do but go on home and ask you again tomorrow. Get up there. Get along with you. Come on, get up. Get up there. Get up. It was several days later that the Lone Ranger and Tonto were watering their great horses at a spring beside a small cabin just outside Sumner. The man who lived in the cabin, an old timer, regarded them with a lively curiosity. Don't suppose, stranger, you'd welcome any questions about that there mask you're wearing? No. <laughs> thought not. Ain't going into town wearing it, though, are you? Well, I hadn't thought about it. You're the doggone this feller. Only man I've seen that explained yourself less than you do is that engine part of yours. And he ain't saying nothing at all. Bad enough, old fella. Them all right now. Tarnation, you can speak, Redskin. Never figured you had it in you. Thanks for the water. Let's go, Kimasabi. Uh -huh. Hey. Yes? You better hold on for a second. There's Mead coming in the buggy there. You won't want him seeing that mask. Is he the law? Him the law? <laughs> well, in one way he is. Whatever he says is sure enough law around here. There they are. That must be his daughter with him. Daughter? <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, golly, what I wouldn't give to see Mead's face if you heard you say that. <laughs> She's an attractive girl. You really don't know who she is? I don't. That's Nora Stevens. Yes. Say, where have you fellas been that you ain't heard of her? She's an actress, that's what she is. Sure, stands up on the stage there in the opera house, as bold as brass and talks words by the hour. 
Don't have to read them off a of paper, neither. I see. <laughs> but that one about her being Meade's daughter. <laughs> I won't be forgetting that first spell. And him trying for near a week now to get her to marry him. Oh, golly. Well, there's quite a difference in age. That ain't the only difference. No? She's doggone nice, fair-spoken as you please. And him, that viper so plum poisonous, he'd poison himself. Meanest man for a hundred miles around. And between you and me, stranger, just about the last one I'd care to cross. Bad, huh? Nothing you'll ever catch him at. But he runs, Sumner, I can tell you that. Why, take that girl he just rode by with, for instance. She's traveling to that show just so she can find Bob's... Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you said your horses had all the water they wanted, huh? What did you start to say? Nothing I... I'm going to... Nothing I'm going to finish, stranger. I had my orders along with the rest of folks around here. And I think too much of my health to go again them. Orders from Meade? I've said too much already. You didn't hesitate to tell us what you think of the fellow? Oh, that's some different. Meade, he likes being called names. Thrives on it, he does. But there's things you can say around here... And things you can't. I believe I understand. Steady, Silver. Guns out of. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Good day to you. Where we go? Back the way we came. We not go town? Later, perhaps, but not now. What matter? I don't know. Maybe nothing. But we're not going into Sumner until we find out. Then what we do? I think that old fellow back there started to say Bob Stevens before he caught himself. Oh, him fella got big mine over that way. That's where we're headed, Kimosabe. To see if Bob Stevens ever heard of a girl by the name of Nora Stevens. Come on, Silver. Come on, old fellow. Racing over the trail through the rest of the day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto did not pause for a rest until late that night. Before dawn, they were on their way again, until at last they saw ahead of them Bob Stevens' mine and the shack he had built near its entrance. There's the place, Tonto. Come on, Silver. I don't see him. He's come to the door. He must have heard our horses. Uh, Hello there. What do you want? Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, put a redskin with you. Don't slap, brother. Uh, hold up. Hip. Oh, my arm. I said not to reach for that gun. Drop it back in your holster. You. Drop it. There. Now then, forget that gun for a while. You're in no danger. Then what do you want here? I'm not sure myself. Huh? I won't be until you answer some questions. What questions? Something curious happened yesterday near Sumner. I don't know whether it concerned you or not. A man there started to say that a young woman was searching for Bob. He stopped before he pronounced all of the last name. It sounded as though he might have started to say Stevens. I don't see... The young woman was named Nora Stevens. Nora? You recognize the name? You are tricking me, are you? This... This isn't just some crooked game, is it? It isn't. But you'll have to judge that for yourself. Who is Nora Stevens? I've got a sister by that name. Have you seen her? Don't stand there, talk. I saw Nora Stevens just briefly. She was riding near Sumner. What'd she look like? I said I had just a glance at her. Her hair was dark like yours. And I'd say there was real resemblance between you. But, but how'd she get here? I've written, had people looking for her, done everything. She's with a troop of actors. Actors? They've been at the opera house in Sumner for two weeks now. Could be. Sis always was crazy about the stage. Strange you didn't know she was there. I've been told almost everyone in the district has heard of her. I hardly ever go to Sumner. No? It's a good place to stay away from with that crook Mead running the place. There's no telling what he'd frame up to cheat you. I've struck it rich. Oh, so I've heard. I've heard a few things about Mead. You probably know more about his reputation than I do, however. He's the worst kind of a crook. Yes? As cold as a fish and as greedy as... I don't know what. I haven't got the names to describe him. But he's crooked, crooked all through. What about the law in town? In Meade's pay? Sheriff's all right. He just isn't smart enough for Meade. I see. You going to Sumner now? Nothing will stop me. And, stranger, I, I'm apologizing for the way I drew on you. You brought me the best news I ever heard. It's easy to misunderstand this mask. How soon are you starting? I'd like to start right away, if... If you don't mind. Go ahead, that's all right. I've got some fixing up to do. I won't, don't want sis to see me like this if it's really her. We may see you again. Tonto, I couldn't tell Bob we'd seen Mead with Nora. Not after what we'd heard about Mead. Uh, Looks like there's trouble ahead, Kimasabi. Bob hating Mead and Mead attempting to marry Bob's sister. Maybe plenty trouble. If, if there is, we'll try to stop it. We're going to get to Sumner before Bob and see what we can do. Uh, I'll still get him up go. And falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. On the day after the Lone Ranger talked with Bob Stevens, Meade rode in his buggy to the home where Nora was rooming, dismounted, and approached the door. Just wasn't expecting. Said I'd be here, didn't I? I always do what I say I'm going to do, don't I? Yes. Well, ain't you going to invite me in? Ain't I good enough, huh? You think I'm not good enough? I'm alone. That don't matter. Well? You might close the door. Uh, yes. Now then, I'll just sit down and wait for you. Wait for me? We're going someplace? You didn't tell me. Going to the sky pilot. You and me. What? We're going to get hitched. Got the license right here. Paid cash for it. Well, what are you standing with your mouth open for? But, Mr. Mead, I never said I'd marry you. I know it, and I ain't deep. You needn't shout at me. Then why... I said I'd be here today and ask you again for the last time. Well, consider the question asked. You ain't gonna turn me down when you know I won't ask again, are you? I should. And make me waste the cash I paid for the license? Nonsense. I simply can't decide. Women folks never know their own minds. That's what men are for. To tell him. Oh. Now go on, put on your doodad. Female always craves to dress fancy for getting hitched to tell me. <laughs> go on. You, you've already told the minister? I ain't told him nothing. If I did, he'd say he had to wait for me and charge me double. It ain't worth it. Oh, I don't know. Said I did, didn't I? You, you really meant it when you said you'd help me find Bob? That you wouldn't care how much it cost to locate him? Didn't say I wouldn't care. Just said I'd spend what had to be spent. What more do you want? That... Seems fair enough. Of course it is. Then, then yes, I will. Miss Stevens. Oh. I'm asked, Keller. You are me? What if I am? You ain't scaring me none. I'm interfering with your plans, though. What are you? Miss Stevens, I have news for you. News? Your brother's on his way to town at this moment. He should arrive by evening. My brother? Bob's wealthy. He struck it rich. Discovered a vein of gold less than two days' journey from here. That's a lie. Quiet. There's something else. Yes, yes. Meade knew all the time where Bob could be reached. So did almost everyone in Sumner. I've been making inquiries and learned that Meade threatened anyone who told you. You did that to me? No, no, it ain't so. It's all a pack of lying tales. Don't you believe him, Nora. Don't you pay no attention to him. You come along with me to the sky pilot. I'll do nothing of the kind. Ah, don't say that, Nora. It's a mistake. I'm warning you. You can't put no credit what a mask outlaw says. We'll see. I'm waiting until morning. You'll be sorry. I'm warning you. Said I wouldn't ask you again. Well, I won't. And don't you come begging me neither. Get out. Don't you hit out. me. Folks are going to be sorry for this. Certain folks I can name. Me, don't try anything. If you do, you'll pay for it. Take me, little pay, but other folks will. You wait and see. Trembling with rage, Meade sent his buggy careening back to Sumner's business district, where he pulled up in front of his dingy office. As he opened the door, he ordered the two men who'd been loafing outside to follow him. You, Ruth, Smokey, get in here. Uh, what's the matter, Mr. Meade? Something wrong? Get in here. I'll show him. I'll teach him. He'll learn what it means to run up again me. I'm boss of this town. They'll be sorry. Hey, Mr. Meade. Must be something plenty wrong. I give orders nobody was to tell Nora Stevens about her brother being nearby. And someone did? Just so. But they'll be sorry. I said it. And I never waste time saying what I don't mean. Yes, who was it? Oh, I'd sure hate to be in his boots. It was a mask, fella. Yeah? You didn't see his face? It don't matter. You paid just the same. I got orders for you two. Sure, Mr. Mead. Any, anything. Bob Stevens is coming here. The mask fella said he'd be in town tonight. Meaning right now he must be somewhere over by Porcupine Ridge. And after all you done to keep the girl from finding out. Gosh, they'll meet up tonight, sure, shooting. No, they won't. No? How are you going to stop them? I ain't. You are. Oh. Uh, wh what do you got in mind? Both of you. You're going to lay for that young Stevens whippersnapper just this side of White Rock Hill. You can make it there. You'll have plenty of time. Now, don't try and tell me different. Oh, sure, sure, we can make it. But, but you, you want him dry ghost? Yes, so. Well, if them's your orders... Now, don't get hasty. Just hold on. You ain't heard me out yet. Well, listen. He's got to be killed just the way I say. Shoot him through the back. Then see that he falls into the gulch this side of the hill. Why so particular? Shooting, shooting, ain't it? Sure, I don't say that. You well, disobey him? No, no, not that. I'll tell that. you why, then, being is just a curious. I want you to shoot that fella just the way I say. So as I can tell the law, I seen it done. 
Yeah? So as I can tell the law, I seen the mask fella do it. I'll fix him. I said I would. He'll be sorry. You want to know how it's done? Why don't you come along? No, you don't. You ain't getting me mixed up in trouble in case anything goes wrong. You sure play it safe, don't you? Of course I do. I'm smart, I am. I'm boss of this town. Think I'd be boss if I wasn't smart? Any other orders? If everything goes all right, light a signal fire. Don't keep it going long. Light it on top of the hill and I'll see it all right. And if, if something spoils things... Don't signal at all. And don't come back here. Or I'll nail your hides to this here desk. We're getting paid? Sure. <laughs> I'll pay you by not telling the sheriff what I got on you. <laughs> now get going. Go on, get. Wait. Eh? I, I still don't see what the signal's for. Just told you, didn't I? So as I'd know how things went. And for another reason. What's that? <laughs> so as I won't have to waste no time telling Nora what the mask fell had done to her brother. Now get going before I start scheming something again, you. We're going. We ought to be able to light that signal fire just a little after dusk. Keep your eye out for us. Go on, Spooky. Yeah. <laughs> Said I'd fix him. Said it, didn't I? Well, I will. And after that meddling mask hombre's been blamed for the killing, Nora's going to marry me anyhow. I'll show him. Sure I will. <laughs> just before dusk, Meade mounted upon a saddle horse, concealed himself just outside town, and watched eagerly for the signal. At last, an hour after dark it came. It shone for a brief moment only, but that was long enough. Meade spurred his horse toward town and raced to the sheriff's office. Sheriff, sheriff! Where's the fire? Whoa, 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 whoa. There's been a killing. I seen it. I can give testimony again him. Seen who? Who was killed? It was Bob Stevens was killed. And a masked fella done it. Yeah? Get in the saddle. Come on to where Bob's sister's staying. She's got to be told. Reckon she had it there. Hey, steady there, fella. <coughs> Lead the way. Get up there. Come on. Get, get up, up. Get up. Get along there. Get along there. sound of approaching hoofs, Nora left the chair in which she'd been sitting on the porch and started down the steps. Me. Mr. Mead, I don't want to see you again. Yeah. Even that nasty. You are... Miss Stevens, we, we ain't here on just the errand we'd like to come on. Nope. This ain't just a visit. Sheriff, the, the way you look, what's wrong? Uh, it ain't easy to say. Maybe Mr. Mead ought to tell you. He's the one that's seen it done. So what? I, I don't understand. Now get a hold of yourself. Please tell me, what is it? Your, your brother... Uh, Hilt. Shot in the back. Left to lay in a ghost just side of White Rock Hill. No, no, it couldn't. No. Seen it myself. No. And you know who done it? Want to know? Well, I'll tell you. It was that mask fella. He's the killer. The one you were so ready to believe instead of me. You seen that masked man before? Sure have. He was here today. Here telling things about me that weren't true. And her taking his word for him, see? This is what it got her. I, I don't believe the masked man did it. I seen him. Can't you savvy that? I seen him, I tell you. Can't be no argument about it. Can you give a description of him, Mead? Well, he was... You wanted to describe me, Mead? Oh, Mash. That's him. That's him, all right, Sheriff. Do your duty. Hey, up with your hands there, mister. No. Hey, what the... Frog like lightning. Your gun never cleared its holster, Sheriff. I don't believe you're putting me under arrest. You're under arrest, all right. Maybe I can't make it stick now, but the time will come when I can. I'd like to hear more about this killing I'm supposed to have done. I know all about it. And I'll tell it in court, too. And you shouldn't mind telling it here, Frank. I don't mind. Yeah, telling. I ain't had a chance to hear the details yet myself. How many times did I shoot him? Uh, just once. I see. And where did you say I left him? In that ghost, the side of the hill. You can't get me mixed up. I told you once before today that I wasn't scared of you or your guns. What time of the day was it when this happened? Uh, about an hour ago. Ain't far to the ghost you want to go down there. You saw the whole thing so plainly that you wouldn't hesitate to give testimony? Hesitate? I'd be glad of the chance to give it. You made sure the boy was dead? I did. I wonder if you did. What do you mean by that? You better explain yourself, stranger. I won't have to. I saw some horses stop over in that grove. I think some people are coming who can do the explaining for me. That's you, Tonto? Yes, me. Who are those fellas with you, man? Can't see on account of the dark. Mead can tell you. What the... No, you don't. Stand where you are. Watch him, Sheriff. You'll find he's the man you want. Bob! Oh, this gosh, look at you. Grown so big and pretty. Why, you're a sister to be proud of. You weren't killed, you were. <laughs> Do I look as if I was? Say, what in blazes is going on here? Me said this fellow was killed. Said he's seen it done. And now, here he is. Sato, bring those two fellows here. Uh, not to do that. Uh, you, 
You move. Let me you loose. Move. Let me loose. Let, let me go. Open Smokey. Uh huh. The skunks have tried to kill me. But but what? Sheriff, How? you've been out of town for some time. You didn't know that me try to conceal the fact that Bob lived in this district. Huh? What for? Nora here is Bob's sister. She was looking for him. I'm not sure of Meade's motive, but I've got an idea. He tried to keep them apart until he could marry Nora. And he likely planned to arrange something to happen to Bob so that his wife would inherit Bob's mind. Ain't so. Ain't none of it so. Can't prove a thing again. Now, how do you explain the detailed description of Bob's death? You told it just as though it had been planned beforehand, and you knew the plan. Uh, hey, these fellows here, Roof and Smoke Nuts, have been hired by me. They as good as said so when the engine and me caught them. They was laying for you? Sure, when I told Nora what Meade had done, I knew he would be up to some trick. I sent Tonto to follow him. When Tonto learned his scheme, he raced ahead, met Bob, and turned the tables on Meade's henchmen. Ain't so, I tell you. Sheriff, don't listen to him. I don't know what Roof and Smokey done it. I don't care. It ain't none of my responsibility. You can't pin what they done on me. I wish you'd take the blame all by yourselves, huh? You're a dirty coward trying to sneak out of it. Well, we're caught. And when we tell what we know, so you'll be. No, keep still. You can't do this to me. I'll pay you. I'll pay you cash. What you'll do is go to jail. You and your hired gun hands. And jailing you, Meade, is going to do me and the town more good than anything that ever happened around here before. And sis, the masked fella not only got the biggest and slickest crook around here jailed, but he and the Redskins saved my life and brought us together. But where'd they go to? There, by the tree. Oh, 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 Hold on! They're gone, Bob, but we'll remember them always. And some days, perhaps, we'll be able to do some for somebody else what they've done for us. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank <laughs> you.